Tesla hitting another speed bump yesterday, announcing a voluntary recall of 123,000 Model 8 cars. The automaker says it's concerned that corroding bolts in cold temperatures could lead to power steering failures. The stock is down more than 14% this year as the company deals with production concerns. Let's bring in Lisa Copeland, Enterprises CEO and automotive analyst. Lisa, your reaction to this? It's not the which model? It's the it? Model it's not, S. It's, it's the, the Model S. S. Not the yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the Model S. That's a prompter error. That wasn't me. I know my car is better than I, I don't, like <laughs> yeah. we talked about earlier today. Um, you know, I think it's just a bump in the road for Tesla. I mean, fundamentally, you know, they did the right thing by pulling the cars off the road. You always have to be concerned about the safety of your consumer. But, you know, it's minor. It's in a minor market. Um, they've put over a billion miles on this particular vehicle and with, with no problem. I think it had to do with a part that it was part of the power yeah. steering it, it, it from was part the German. Of the part, yeah. It was part of the power steering. And it's really only affected in areas where it snows and the uh, and the ice and the salt on the road. Well, roads. that's not good. But Tesla's <laughs> problems relate yeah. to its a cash burn, billion dollars a quarter um, bond. You know that they, you look at the the bond that it issued uh, last year, mm -hmm. how it was trading. It, it's about the the uh, the Model Three and the production of the Model Three. Right. And can they really ramp up production? Do you think they can do it? I mean, is this company? Vi will it be not only viable but successful? I think it's viable and I think it's successful for a couple of reasons. You know, they have built an army of influencers and champions that absolutely, they'll wait two to three years for this car. And I think Elon Musk is one of the most brilliant automotive minds, just one of the most brilliant, brilliant minds in business today. And I just, I, I, I believe in him. I think that he's going to figure it out and I think the consumers are going to wait. You've got 25 years of experience in an industry that is less than 20% female. You yeah. talk about the importance of women, how they influence 85% of mm. car purchases, yes. which I can certainly speak to. Yes. You talk, spoke about that at the New York International Auto Show. Which cars from the show this year are most popular among women? You know, the thing with women, you know, as much as we like to look at the aesthetics of a car, safety is number one to us. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to make sure that everybody who's in the car with us, our passengers and our kids, that they're safe. You know, I'm, I'm a really big fan of the Volvo XC90, uh, the XC40, and the XC60. Subaru is, you know, always been second to none when it comes comes to not only safety but engineering and design also. Are car salesmen, because I'm a, a gearhead and I have been from childhood thanks to my dad. Right. I, my dad didn't look at me like, you know, his daughter. He looked at me as his child. Sure. And he didn't, he's like, I'm interested in airplanes and in pickup trucks and mm -hmm. so you're going <laughs> to learn how to rebuild an engine. Right. Uh, are car salesmen equipped to talk to women about what women are interested in? And I mean the men out there selling cars. That's a great question. Um, you know, women do more research than anybody known to man, like 14 hours of research before she ever enters the showroom for the first mm. time. So whether it's men or women, what I've found that women consumers are usually more educated than the salespeople on the showroom floor. Well, that's really interesting. So they say that 90% of the women that go into auto sales leave the industry within the first year because it's difficult for working mothers, you know, the yeah. evenings, weekends, holidays, and things like that. you got to yeah. work Saturday if you yeah. sell cars. Saturdays, really nights, Saturdays. holidays, yeah. the whole bit, you know. So what are, you've been in this industry for over 25 years. What do you say to women that are in difficult industries dominated by men? How do they stick with it? What is it about perseverance? I've always thought that I could sell some dog on cars. I think you could sell some cars. <laughs> <laughs> I could know, be, I, I'm bad at selling some stuff, but I could sell some cars. Yeah, you know, and I started my career selling cars. You know, but, you know, you know women, first of all, I mean, women know that this is a male-dominated industry. And that's, you know, and so a lot of them are afraid to even go in and, and try it out. But it's a fantastic in industry that affords all kinds of opportunities. But you're right. NA ADA says 90% of women salespeople will leave the industry within 12 months, within 12 months you know, and it's, 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 it's lack of role models, it is lack of access to role models, and it's, it's lack of flexibility. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, these women are educated, they're fantastic, and they're smart. They have a lot of options. I can sell a car or I can get into the tech industry. Let's see. What, what was your key right? to success? Yeah. How, what, what made you stay? What was yeah, the... And Sorry, no, I was going to just point out that the General Motors CEO is a lady. I love her, Mary Barra. And, you know, and that's where we started to see some change. That's where we started to see the conversation started about women in automotive. I had the honor of meeting her in 2016, and she's fantastic. In fact, I wanted to take a picture with her, and she said, well, can I put my lipstick on first? <laughs> I was like, we're going to be friends. So, Lisa, you talk about women loving safety in cars, but it was women who designed the Hellcat engine for the Dodge Demon, right? How many horsepower is that? Right, yeah. It's 
it's over 500 horsepower. And it was, it was yes, it, and it, it was for the Hellcat. I mean, that's not a safety thing. Well, that's and a I just wish every man in America knew that that car was, was, was designed by a woman. But it was. Yeah. I, I wanted to point out one woman because you never get a chance to do this on TV, and I bet you know who she is. Her name's Alba Cologne. She used to work at General Motors, and, and she in their racing team. She was an engineer, and yeah. she just went to work at Hendrick Motorsports. But she mm. was a real. She was born in Spain, grew up in Puerto Rico, and was this has been and still is this incredible force in NASCAR in the racing world. Right. It was just incredible that this woman because that if there is a man sport, I can't think. I'm mean, very love racing and women love NASCAR, you know, and I think that we're finally starting to get our voice when it comes to automotive, not only as consumers, but in racing, you know, and Mary Barr has helped lead that charge. But, you know, but women, I mean, you know, they're really, they really are starting to come into the fact they understand their power. When you influence 85% of an industry, of the purchases, of what's going on, you know, that needs to start mirroring, you know, that, you know, that needs to start, you know, the, you know, the demographic needs to start happening. More women need to design cars, get involved in STEM, more women need to be on the show room floors and stick with it. It's not an easy business, but it's a great business and it can take you all the way to the top. What are you driving right now? I'm I asked you that when you, you said You did. I'm, I, I am driving a Mercedes right now. So, yes. And I like it. <laughs> you you <laughs> paused there. Who's German engineering and here she is. <laughs> yeah, because, because we were actually talking about before how I've always been a Maserati driver. So I like the Mercedes. I love the Maserati. What was your favorite car out of the car show? Yeah. I mean, you were just there, so I'm curious. What, 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 uh, what excited you the most or what was your favorite car? The Bugatti or the, the Maybach. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm still seeing performance and aesthetics yes. here, not safety. Well, you're, you're totally bucking the trend. I yes, guess. I am sort of semi-bucking the trend. And, you know, that little car, if you get hit in it, you know, stuff might happen. But, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, women like, you know, women, women want to feel fantastic in a vehicle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but we also have to multi-purpose a vehicle more so than our male counterparts. And are there any little features or bells and whistles that we can put into these cars to make them a little bit more geared to the ladies? Okay, so I'm obsessed with Volvo. Um, I, I did, I was at the Chicago. Chicago Auto okay. Show and I covered it and they have got a hook in the, on the passenger side where you can either hang your purse or you can hang your fast food bag. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's fantastic. Yeah. How thing. many of us like have French fries in the bags? So we stick the bag on there and grab a fry as we're driving down the street. And, and, we don't want to admit it, but we do it. And <laughs> Volvo, and correct me if I'm wrong, has been really terrific at integrating what I'd call semi-autonomous driving technology yes. into the automobile. Yes. And so we, it, it's not from driving the automobile yourself to fully autonomous, but it is the, the integration of those features that makes it easier yes. to get around and, and improve safety. Well, I'll tell you, the XC40, a fantastic car from Volvo, and it's you know sem semi-autonomous, so it has a 14-mile range. So if you live in the city, you may never have to burn any gas. Wow. So it's 14 miles, and then at that point, it'll switch over to gas. So that's what I like. You know, I, I like it when you can go both ways, because then you might not have gotten in trouble in your car. Oh, yes, right. I've gotten out of gas. In my hybrid, it's true. That, <laughs> that Bugatti is like a couple million dollars. Yeah, you know? just a couple. But just it was fantastic. And you can't, they and literally you, had armed guards around it. What can wow. you say? I'm you like, can I sit get, it? And they're like, no. Yeah, and ladies, if you want to actually go buy one of these cars, you can't get your hands on them. So I, I think they need to put more women on women on the waiting list of the Ferraris and the and the Bugatti. The Bugattis. Right, yeah. yeah, and and um, I think um, I think women have to just own the fact that we ought to be driving Ferraris and Bugattis. I mean, we're, we're great with that. That's what we should do. But you know, a lot of women, again, you know just don't right. put that into their uh, on their shopping list so I just hope my wife's watching right now we should own a Ferrari for her sake yes a right. California Ferrari a See? California yeah. Ferrari okay. yeah she would look good it. in that car See, thank you <laughs> mm -hmm. still selling still, still selling, selling. Can't love cars Lisa, I come, love the auto industry I do too. and we loved having you here thank Lisa. you what thanks a, for having what me a, what a treat on a, a Friday